Hello and welcome to the City of Games. My name's Frank and today I would like to tell you the history and events that led up to the creation of Emberleaf. Now this is kind of a curiosity and an interesting story and it's one of the reasons I want to share it is because not only is it interesting for how Emberleaf came to be, but for anyone else who's maybe thinking about making games or designing games, perhaps it will kind of set you on a path for yourself. So this story begins, believe it or not, in 2017. So what's that kind of seven years ago, seven and a half years ago, I think it was, it was the start of 2017. And I was preparing to make my first Kickstarter it was going to launch in a few weeks, the City of Kings, and I went to a convention called Aircon in the UK. I think this was the first time I ever really went to a board game convention, and I didn't have a booth or anything like that. I just knew, well, maybe it'd be good to go and meet some people. Maybe it'd be good just to get out there. I hadn't really done this, and it was a, literally, I think it was a couple of weeks until my Kickstarter was launching. So, I went there and had a copy of my game and I got to play it with a few people and so on. So that was cool. But more importantly, I encountered a person called James and James was there exhibiting his game Defection that was going to be launching on Kickstarter. I don't think there was a date set yet. He was still working on it, but he was there getting people to come and have a look. And this is a convention, you know, there's only a few hundred people. We're not talking about a big event. But James and I had kind of briefly interacted on Twitter at the time, and we kind of just were like, it'd be cool to meet up and just say hello. You know, we're both working on games and so on. It seemed like we might get on. So I went over and chatted to James. I actually spent more time talking to his dad than James himself because his dad was there helping him, and which was, was great. You know, it's a wonderful thing. And obviously James was there with um, his game doing demos. And I spoke to James a little bit, and as I thought, we kind of got on. But <laughs> the funny thing was, is that we discovered that we lived less than five minutes from each other. We were like a mile away, so one and a half kilometers away from each other. And yet we were meeting like a five hour car journey away from where we lived. So coincidentally, we're just like, let's meet up when we get back. Now, our paths kind of moved on. I was... I shouldn't say lucky because I took a lot of risks back in the day, but I was lucky in that I was able to devote all of my time to the City of Kings to getting it onto Kickstarter. And it was something where I had quit my job and I really wanted to just dedicate myself to making this game happen. James, on the other hand, was taking a slightly more kind of sensible, reasonable approach, doing a lot more in kind of spare time, working a full time job, still trying to live life and enjoy it whilst making this game on the side but for both of us i think that the connecting part was we were both passionate we both truly wanted this and would do whatever we could within our capabilities to make it happen as the years went on the city of kings went on to kickstarter and it did very well i was very happy i got to release future games the art of cats and so on but James's story was a little bit different because James was great at designing his game, but he had never really picked up on the kind of marketing side of it, so to speak. So much as I hate the word marketing, there's always an element of that with what we do. People have to be aware of your game. And when it eventually arrived on Kickstarter a few years later, unfortunately, just not enough people knew about the game i think that it really suffered because he just hadn't built up the mail list he hadn't built up the social following he never really enjoyed doing social media and if you want to self-publish this is a really important part of the process so after james's first kickstarter um, unfortunately failed he then kind of had to reassess and one of the things that, I mean, obviously, you know, really back then, like I didn't know anything near like what I know now about kind of game design. But one of the things I kind of said to him back then was, I want you to make the game you want to make. Defection was never the kind of game that I would just go into the shop and buy myself. It wasn't my kind of game, but I liked it as a game. I thought it was a good game, but I felt like the audience for it 
was going to be very small. It was a pick up, deliver, um, big sci-fi kind of game, which is cool. I've got several of these kind of games. And the problem is, is that it's a challenging type of game to get out there. So he did a lot of kind of rethinking. And then over the next couple of years, he redesigned Defection and he um, renamed it. I won't talk about a new name because I don't think it ever got public, but he gave it a new name, was working on this new version of it. And with this one, I did a lot more coaching. I tried to advise him a lot more. And again, allowing him to make the game he wanted to make, but just guiding him on how to try and make it more um, like reaching to a wider audience and keeping that vision. The problem was, is that at this point, James had been working on this game for, I don't know, five, six years. And it was obviously taking a lot of time. And we still had those core issues of the mechanics within the game were not necessarily super popular. The theme in the game was not exactly super popular. And James still hadn't built up that audience. And he was really starting to kind of just wonder, how can I make this happen? Now... Jumping back to myself for a while, I, for quite a few years at this point, or maybe a year or two at this point, had been playing around with this new card system. A card system which I designed four, five, six different games with, and I was in love with this card system. I thought this card system was amazing. It could be simplified into something very basic and entry level. It could evolve into something far more complex and deeper for these big, giant, heavy games. And it was so flexible and so interesting and unique. But I was really struggling with what was the first game I wanted to release with a system. I didn't want it to be too much of the simplified form. I didn't want it to be too much of the advanced form. I wanted it to be somewhere in the middle. And this system came to be known as card dancing. Now, what was kind of interesting is one day James came back to me and said, you know, I'm thinking that maybe I just need to completely rework my game. Maybe I need to change the art style maybe it needs to have a different theme and some of the things we've been talking about and maybe take a different approach with it and one of the things i said to him at the time was the game needs something that will make it stand out the game itself has lots of interesting cool connections and the overall idea of the game is good but what's that like setting point what is that unique thing that can make people go oh i've not seen that before or on a table that looks really cool or grab attention and in the back of my head i was thinking maybe that could be card dancing maybe card dancing would be the system that would work the problem is is that I didn't want to make a pick up and deliver game. I certainly didn't want to make a sci-fi game. All of my games kind of sit within the City of Kings universe and they all have to make sense. And James went off for a little while and he came back and he had these couple of pictures and or drawings, I should say. And he had drawn these um, mouse characters and they were, they were pretty good. I looked at them and I was like, you know what? Those are creatures that could exist within my world. And we sat down for a little bit of time and I said to James, you know, if you want to change it over to these creatures, then you can't just draw a mouse. You have to learn how to draw all sorts, or not learn how to, but you need to be confident you can draw all sorts of different types of things. Because if you can just draw one good picture, that's fantastic. But if you're making a board game, you need to be able to draw hundreds. You know, you need to be able to create any type of thing that comes up. So I said to him, you know, go away and draw a female mouse. Why don't you try and draw like a fox? Or I can't remember what they were, but you know, I set kind of a list of different types of creatures, different like expressions and emotions and stuff. And James went off and he came back and he drew them. And he was he was excited. I was excited. So I pitched him the idea and I said to him, why don't we team up? Why don't we take this new approach of artwork? And why don't we take my card system and then take what Defection had become and see if we could make something and just spend a couple of weeks and just see where we get to. And we had some very specific terms. And I said to James that the important thing is, is if we do this, we're not going to try and put card dancing 
into defection what we're going to do is we're going to craft a new game we're going to create a new game from scratch but we're going to take everything that you've learned over the last five or six years and everything i'd learned about his game as well we're going to take the core concepts the things that i think are the story that you're wanting to tell and we're going to evolve them we're going to refine them and we're going to take everything that i've learned we're going to take parts of the Isle of Cats. We're going to take parts of all of my games and general learnings. And we're going to sit down and see what we can do. And I said, I think the way to approach this is... Because for me, um, obviously, I do this for a living. This is something I've been doing for many years now. And it's my livelihood. Whilst for James, it is still something where, obviously, you know, it's a side hobby that he would like to become something more. But... Is it doesn't have that same weight of importance to his livelihood. So I said, look, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go away and I'm going to spend a week or whatever time is needed to put some thoughts together. And I will create what I see as this game and then present it to you. And we can then see whether it's something that we do want to work on together. So I went off and I kind of listed down like all those key parts of what I thought defection was from all the learnings I'd gained from James and seeing what he wanted to make. And I took my card dancing system and the things that I thought were interesting about it and some elements from the Art of Cats because I wanted to make sure that because this was going to be a more complicated game and we'll talk about this in another video, I wanted to have a sense of familiarity as well for my existing kind of community. So it wasn't a complete let's start from scratch a moment and I pulled all of these ideas together and then invited James over at which point he had done some more characters and they were looking quite cool and they were you know we were ticking a lot of the boxes and I put this game out on the table and we sat down and played it and it was great <laughs> it was for, for the size of the game and the complexity of the game I don't think that it should be possible to get to such a good point from a first prototype, like the first time you play it. And don't get me wrong, the game has changed considerably since then. But we sat down and we played the whole game for you know two and a half hours and we had fun doing it. And the reason it came together so well was this wasn't a game that was coming from nowhere. This was a game that was coming from you know, nearly a decade of experience from um, James and him working on Defection and me just watching that journey and understanding what people liked and didn't like. I mean, I must have seen that game being played hundreds of times just myself and then my own games. And it was really, really good. Now, since then, a lot has happened. James and I um, continue to be really good friends and we've worked together on the design and visual approach and artwork of this game pretty much daily for for as long as I can remember at this point and all of those initial characters that um were drawn out back then like none of those exist anymore those were like so bad compared to what we have now but they were so good at the same time because they were conceptual drawings they weren't finished artwork but yeah I felt like this was a really interesting story to share because as I say people like to know you know how did you come up with the idea for this game and Really, the idea for Emberleaf was two different ideas coming together. It was James's vision for defection and what he wanted it to be. It was my vision for card dancing and evolving the Isle of Cats into something larger. And those things kind of coming together with two different approaches. And what's really interesting with me and James working together is that our design approaches are completely polar opposite but because we get on so well we can sit down and discuss and i think it means that we get the best of both worlds most of the time and whilst i have um yeah no i think that that probably covers the majority of what i kind of feel is worth saying in this video and i'll leave some of the rest for future videos as well because i don't want this to be too long but yeah there we go that is kind of the origin story and whilst it is a shame that defection itself will never exist and you know you could go onto youtube and you could find videos of defection and i can assure you that game looks nothing like emberleaf and 
even the mechanics and stuff you'd feel like a completely different but it still has some of that fundamentalness to it that concept of building a crew in our case recruiting your fellowship the concept of kind of picking up your citizens and taking them off to different planets we've got our kind of rehoming our villages and so on there's there's a lot of kind of loosely connected inspiration there that you can see that would have led to lots of this but anyway um if you've got any questions as i say ask them in the comments below and as always until next time keep hard adventuring